Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here and today we're going to be going over Unit 11, Video 4. So this is your final notes of uh, Algebra 2B and we're going to be talking about geometric series. So let's kind of jump into this just by looking at a word problem because I can kind of frame up what we're trying to learn about today. So it says here, suppose you email a joke to three friends on Monday. Each of those friends send the joke to three of their friends on Tuesday. Each person who receives the joke on Tuesday sends it to three more people on Wednesday and so on. How many people have read it by Friday? Well, let's look at it this way. So on Monday, we told three of our friends, okay? Now on Tuesday, each of those three friends have told three more friends. So we have three friends who told three friends who told three friends. So now we're at nine. And then on Wednesday, those people are all going to tell their friends. So now we're at 27. And on Thursday, their friends are going to tell their friends. So we're at 81. So what you're going to notice is each time we're multiplying by three because each of those friends are telling three more. So that's why we're multiplying instead of adding. And then on Friday, they're going to do three more, so we're going to have 243. So when we add all of these together, that's going to tell us how many students heard the joke, which is 363 people. So this is a geometric sequence because we're multiplying, and since we're going to be adding it together, that's what makes it a geometric series. So it's geometric because we are multiplying to get each of the new terms, and it's geometric, or it's a series, because we're going to be adding it up to get a sum. So we do actually have an equation that we can use for the sum. So it's, there's two kind of equations here. So it kind of is based off of what you know. So your a sub 1 is always going to represent your first term. Okay, so your a sub 1 always represents your first term. Your r's are always going to represent your rate or what you're multiplying by. Multiplying by. Okay, then here your n is the number of terms. And then here, your a sub n, wow, that was not great. Your a sub n is going to be your last term. So what, how do you know when to use which equation? Well, it's very much dependent upon what you know in any given equation. So when I look at number one, for example, so number one is asking us to find the geometric sum for a series, which we know our first term and our last term and our rate. So since we know our first term and our last term and our rate, we're going to want to use this formula right here. So we're going to start by having our first term, which is 1,000. Then we're going to add, subtract our last term, which is 125. And we're going to multiply our last term by our rate, which is 1 half. Then on the denominator, we're going to take and we're going to do 1 minus our rate, which is 1 half. So then here, when I do 125 times 1 half, I'm going to get 1,000 minus 62.5 divided by 0.5. So when I subtract those, I get 937.5 divided by uh, 0.5. And then when I divide those out, I get 1,875. So that's going to be the sum of that geometric series. Okay, now let's take a look at the next one. So the next one is asking us, it says, Margot arranges some rows and commas of dominoes so that after she knocks over the first one, each domino knocks over two more when it falls. If there are 10 rows, how many dominoes does Mariah use? Or Maria, sorry. So let's take a look at this first. Okay, so if we're knocking over two each time, that means my R is going to be equal to two. If we have 10 rows, that means that my n is going to be equal to 10 because this is going to be happening 10 times. Well, she knocks over the first one, so that means that my a sub 1 is 1. Okay? So then we want to figure out which formula to use, and we're going to be using that one because we don't know what our last term is, but we do know how many terms that we have. So let's plug it into that formula. So my sum is going to be equal to my first term, which is 1. And then I'm going to do 1 minus my rate, which I know is 2, raised to the exponent of how many rows that I have, which is 10, divided by 1 minus my rate, which is 2. So then I have 1, and then 1 minus 2 to the 10th power, um, which is going to give me 1,024, divided by a negative 1. 
So then on top, I get negative 1,023 divided by negative 1. So then I'm going to get a 1,023. So that's my answer. So when you look at this, you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of formulas to memorize. And it is. So when you look at a word problem like this and you know your rate, you could just write it out as a sum, kind of like what we did in the first problem. So I could do 1, and then I know that it's going to knock over 2 of that. So 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, times 2 is 64, times 2 is 128, times 2 is 256. So how many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, times 2 is 512. And then if you were to add all of those up together, you should get 1,023. So you could do it that way as well if trying to memorize this formula is too much. That's another way of looking at it. I like to practice with the formulas because if you use them enough, um, typically then you kind of get used to them. So this is fun. Um, so let's take a look at the next problem. I'm going to see if I can exit out and get back in again here, see if it works a little bit better for me. All right, so let's take a look at this one. We'll let it load the pages here. So it says, contagious diseases can be spread very quickly. Suppose five people are ill during the first week of an epidemic, and each person spreads the disease, okay? And um, to four people by the end of next week, by the end of the 10th week of the epidemic, how many people have been affected? Well, let's look at this. So five people are starting with it. So that means that our A sub 1 is equal to 5. Oh my, this is rough. Let me try closing that out again. This is why you should get new iPads, first of all, and you are next week, but by the time you watch this, you probably already have them. Um, and then we're going to look at um, our next problem. This is awesome. I love this. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay, there we go. All right, so now looking at this one, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out it's spreading the disease to four people. So if we're spreading our disease to four people, that means our R is going to be equal to four. And then we want to figure out by the 10th week of the epidemic, so that means that our N is equal to 10. So by that 10th week, how many people have been affected? So let's go ahead and let's use the sum. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our A sub 1, which is 5. And then we're going to do 1 minus our rate, which is 4, and raise it to our n power, which is 10, divided by 1 minus our r. So then we're going to do 5. And then 1 minus 4 to the 10th power is a really big negative number, like so. And then 1 minus our r, I guess I should have plugged my r in, which is 3. Okay, or four, I'm sorry. Wow, this technology issue is really throwing me off. And then I get a negative three. So next, I'm gonna multiply the top by five. So I'm going to get this big crazy number when I multiply by five. And then we're gonna divide by a negative three. So when I do that, I get 1,700,000, oops, 1,700,000, 1,747,625 people. Again, you can go through and do that, and what you can do is you can um, write out all of the terms like I did previously, and when you do that, you can kind of create those sequences so that you are able to then um, go ahead and write out the terms and add them together. That's a way of going around the formula. Now, the only note to that is that you can't... Um, do formulas. So when you're looking at the formulas, if you only know the first and the last term and you don't know how many terms you are, then your best bet is to use the formula itself. Okay, I stalled enough to get a new version of this open, so yay for me. All right, so let's um, talk a little bit about sigma notation. So I'm just going to add in an extra slide here. So you've got this kind of note on sigma notation. So sigma notation looks really scary, but it's not actually that bad. So the number that's on the top, that's the number that you're going to go to. So you're trying to go to that value. So that's basically kind of like your a sub n. That's how many, how many, not your a sub n, but this is the, the number of terms that you want to have. So this is like your n up here. Then down here, you're going to have n is equal to 1. Well, what does that tell you? That's your first value. 
okay? Then you're going to have some sort of expression right here. Now, this expression helps you generate the term. So what does that mean? Well, all it means is you're going to take the first n value and plug it in there, and then you're just going to continue to work your way up until you have all of the terms, and then you can plug it into the summation uh, formula. So it looks a lot more confusing than I think it is. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at... Um, let me see if I, oh, there's that slide. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at number four. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in, okay? So this right here tells me that I'm starting with one. So I need to figure out what a sub one is. And I figure out what a sub one is by plugging in a one for my exponent. So I'm going to do three to the first power, which is three, times two, which is six. Now here, I know that my n is five. Okay, so that means I'm going to have five terms total. And that my r is going to be three, which I think can be confusing. Yes, this is your three, but I think that's confusing. So what I actually end up doing is figuring out what my a sub n is. Well, my a sub n, if we're going to five terms, my a sub n is going to be a sub five. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in that five. So I'm going to do three to the fifth power which is going to give me 243, and I'm going to times that by 2, which gives me 486. So now I know the last term, and I know the first term, okay? So to figure out my r, my r is going to be whatever I'm raising the n to. So my r is whatever I'm raising the n to. So now, because I found both of those, I can pick from either one of these formulas. Or if I'm more confused doing it that way, I could start at 6, and then 6 times 3 is 18. And then 18 times 3 is 54. And then 54 times 3 is 162. And then 162 times 3 is 486. And then I can just add all of those numbers up together. And I get 726. So that's the way you can do it. Once you figure out the first term and the rate, then you can just continually multiply it by the rate to get your sum. But you also could go ahead and use the formula if you wanted to. So like we could use this formula right here. So your a sub 1 is 6, 1 minus the rate, which we decided was 3, raised to the fifth power. And then on the bottom, 1 minus our rate. Okay, well, 6 and then 1 minus 3 to the fifth power is a negative 242 divided by a negative 2. Okay, so when we solve that out, we end up getting 726. Again, so I just want to show you that, like, if these formulas are really confusing, you can do it both ways. So let's kind of take a look at this next problem. Cool, it's going to do this again. So that's awesome. Um, so thankfully we only have one left and my iPad can stop having a mental breakdown at that point. Um, so let's take a look at this problem right here. So what I notice is that there's an addition right here. So I've got 5 to the nth power plus 7. Well the problem with this is it's not arithmetic or geometric. So I can't use any of the formulas that we've done it up to this point. So what I actually have to do is calculate out each term. So I need to figure out what a sub 1 is what a sub 2 is, what a sub 3 is, and what a sub 4 is, and add them together. And that's always an option when you're doing these summations, is just to plug it in and figure what it is. So I'm going to be putting in each of those values for n. So for a sub 1, I'm going to have 5 to the first power plus 7. Well, 5 to the first power is 5, plus 7 is going to give me 12. Now I'm going to put in a 2. So 5 to the second power plus 7. Well, 5 squared is 25 plus 7 is going to give me 32. Then I'm going to have 5 to the third power plus 7. So 5 to the third power is going to give me 125. And then plus 7 is 132. And now I'm going to do 5 to the fourth power plus 7. Well, 5 to the fourth power is 625. And then I'm going to add 7, which is 632. So the last thing I need to do to get this summation, because when you see this symbol, what we say is summation. So when we're talking about summation, we're looking for a sum. We want to add everything together. So 12 plus 32 plus 132 plus 632. And then I'm going to add all of those together. And when I do that, I get 808. So that would be my final answer for that one. So thanks for bearing with me through my technology issues. If you have any questions, please let me know.